Well, good morning, everybody. We want to welcome you to our June 26th Sunday service brought to you online by two congregations of St. Columba Presbyterian Church in Parksville and St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in uh, Duncan on Vancouver Island. This is our call to worship as we begin. Come, let us worship the God who came to seek and save the lost. Let us worship the God who came to seek and save each of us. Let us welcome God into our homes and our hearts. Let us give of ourselves in this time of worship that we may know God. Let us joyfully and with gratitude worship God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we pray and we ask that you would receive our worship, that we would be renewed by your spirit and that we would be spurred on to greater faith in you. We gather in our homes and different places, but we are united in our hearts together as a faith community, as your body, as a body of Christ, to bring you wholehearted and fully devoted worship of you. Be present with us and minister to us as we seek to joyfully and gladly praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing uh, a very simple song to the words that I will say, and then uh, perhaps you can join me once uh, I've shared the words with you. The song is called Sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Friends, uh, we're going to start back in our uh, church service first Sunday of September, we're all trying uh, very hard to prepare the sanctuary and our churches uh, so that, that we can be open and begin meeting in person again. And oftentimes, I think sometimes we might be misled or misguided to have a false uh, understanding that the sanctuary is actually this physical building that we are located in. But the Bible continually reminds us that the sanctuary is really within our hearts and that every single one of us, by God's grace and with Christ living in us, that we are made to be holy and pure, worthy to give God glory. So we are the sanctuary and our hearts are prepared to be the sanctuary where God can dwell and where his presence is felt and is, is made. So we know that, I know that we're all in separately, uh, perhaps even across the world, in our homes and in different places, but this is your sanctuary. This is a time that we gather together to bring God worship. And this song reminds us of that. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
Our scripture today comes from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be with the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to the house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Good morning, St. Andrews here in Duncan and St. Columba up in Parksville. I am so glad to have you join me this morning uh, in this capacity that we are able to do. Uh, I pray and trust that you are all doing quite well. There's been a couple issues with my camera today. It keeps auto-focusing and it is really annoying. I already did this sermon and watched it and it drove me nuts. So I'm going to try to stay really still. I haven't been able to figure out what's going on. So hopefully that doesn't happen very much. And if it does, please ignore it like I just did there. Today we are going to talk about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, a wee little man is he. He went up into a sycamore tree because it's Jesus he wanted to see. If you grew up uh, going to camps or youth group, you probably know that song. I did, but I forgot it. I don't know all the words anymore. But we are going to talk about Zacchaeus and some lessons we can learn from his story. But let's open up in prayer uh, before we get into it. Lord, we just thank you um, that even throughout this uh, situation we find ourselves in, you are continuing to move in our midst. You are continuing to bring people together, to bring restoration, to bring transformation. Lord, thank you for moving in us and through us. May we have eyes to see and ears to hear what you are doing. Amen. I'd like to start off with a little story. When I was growing up, uh, under 10 years old, my mother started a Bible study for some of the ladies uh, in my neighborhood. These ladies were uh, somewhat rough on the outside. They're all great ladies, but one had like the F word tattooed on her and, and uh, they were quite rough and tough on the outside. There was one lady named Joy and Joy was tough, but she just had the best heart uh, do anything for her friends. And she started going to this Bible study and she ended up accepting the Lord. And then she started coming to church. She was living with a guy named Tommy. And Tommy would never come to church. Didn't really want anything to do with it. But when I would preach uh, when I was a teenager, every once in a while, he would come. He wouldn't come any other time. But if I was preaching, he would be there. It was quite amazing. And... Then I went off to Bible school and Tommy got diagnosed with a couple of different types of cancer. And he wasn't given very long to live. So when I came back from Bible school for a summer, him and 
Joy decided to get married. In the hospital, it was just a fantastic wedding. A bunch of nurses brought their um, tablecloths and uh, it was covered by the news, uh, even in Winnipeg and, and Toronto. It, uh, it was absolutely amazing. Even though there was this sense of um, what's gonna happen later, that day was just so full of joy and happiness. And a couple days later, Tommy or Joy called me and said that Tommy wanted uh, me to lead him and Joy in communion, which I said, sure, absolutely. So I went to the hospital uh, with my crackers and my juice. And I went there and all three of us partook in the Lord's Supper. I didn't realize at the time how special that was. I didn't see God moving in that situation. That was the first communion they'd done as a couple. That might have been the only communion Tommy's ever done. Tommy passed away a couple days after that. But sometimes you can miss what God's doing in our midst. Like I knew it was incredible that was happening, but I didn't really get the depth of it. I didn't get how that would transform the people's lives that were involved in Tommy's life. Sometimes we can miss it. Sometimes we can be too preoccupied to see what God is doing. And Tommy, his story reminds me of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, was a wealthy tax collector. Jesus is coming to town. He wants to see him. So he goes out. There's a big crowd where Jesus is. He uh, can't see through the crowd because he's quite small. So he climbs a sycamore tree and he he's looking for Jesus. There's things in our own life that prevent us from seeing Jesus. Uh, whether it be pride, selfishness, uh, hatred, um, name, name one of the sins that can stop us from seeing what God is doing in our midst. Even during this COVID situation, we can use that as an excuse to kind of put our, our lives, our community, our our building up one another on hold because of the our distancing that we have to do. So he climbs the sycamore tree, and that's what's that's what's important about the church. The church to me is that sycamore tree. The church, you in my life, when I can't see what God is doing around me, when I have trouble seeing through my own situation, through my own struggles, um, through my own experiences, when I can't see what God is doing or how he is moving, that's when I need the church. That's where you guys come in. And I'll do it for you too. We're to gain a different perspective on what's happening. Your stories and your experiences and your faith help me in my faith. They help me see God differently, in a different way than I maybe normally would have done. And that's amazing. That's an amazing thing um, that we can come together all different, all different experiences, all different stories and worship the one God um, together in, in unity. It's phenomenal. And Jesus passes by and he looks up in the tree and he says, Hey Zacchaeus, I want to come and stay at your house today. Zacchaeus comes down and, and he's all glad. I would have loved to have seen Zacchaeus' face when that happened because Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And tax collectors in that day uh, for the Romans were not the most um, upstanding citizens. 
they were put in place by the Roman Empire when Rome would conquer an area or a people and they wanted the money from the people they would get these tax collectors to take their money and Rome needed a certain percentage a certain amount um, and the tax collectors got whatever was over and above that and they could charge as often or as much as they wanted so let's say Rome needed $200 tax collector could charge 400 for people and pocket the rest of it they were not they were not seen well in people's eyes uh, it's hard to even think of uh, another job that's like that today um, maybe a, a pharmaceutical company that uh, takes a hundred dollars to make a drug and then charges it for 15,000 um, and people have to pay that for their life that might be like that and so when Jesus sees him and says I want to stay at your house that's amazing this guy total shock no one wants to stay at his house he's a tax collector no one likes him and Jesus wants to stay at his house I don't know uh, all of you who are seeing this um, I don't know everyone's history past stories but Jesus has time for you and he knows you by name he wants to he wants you to get to know him more he wants you to see him more um, I can see the cameras kind of acting up if I step back a little bit Jesus loves you he wants to come to your house today he wants to be invited into your life um, all aspects of your life and I know there's stuff in my life at, at different times that I have rejected the Jesus offering to come into that situation I was too ashamed or too prideful or a myriad of other things um, but he wants to come in and he wants to change you uh, and that's what Jesus did he went to his house and he just being there transformed Zacchaeus's life just that act of kindness just that act of Jesus being the big show in town saying hey I want to come to your house today changed Zacchaeus enough that he said I'm going to give half of my wealth to the poor and if I've wronged anyone I'm going to pay him back four times as much that's what Jesus does he transforms in any situation that we invite him to it's transformative it, it has to be um, even in our own lives in our workplace in our families in our community um, if we invite Jesus like he wants to in, into that area he's going to transform it he's going to change it um, it's just who he is it's amazing the thing that I thought about with Zacchaeus is I wonder the other people that were that knew Zacchaeus that were uh, victims of his greed if they recognized what God was doing in there if they had uh, metaphorically put up uh, crowds in front of them like hatred and anger and were unable to see what God was doing just like Zacchaeus at the beginning couldn't see Jesus I wonder if they were open and accepting of Zacchaeus like hey he's he's one of us now that's awesome or if there was quite a few hurdles even after he gave back the money that they had to get over in conclusion I don't want this video sermon to be too long God is moving in our midst he always is he always will be he always has um, he didn't just set the world up like a clock to tick on its own and just stand back and watch it happen he is 
is involved, he is in it, he is working through it. Um, he's working in us and through us. And as a community, we are called to lift each other up like that tree so we can see what God is doing. We can encourage each other to see. And I hope that we have the faith and the courage to follow where God's leading us. I hope we invite him in to our churches, to our lives, so he can transform us. I hope and I pray that we come together in, in unity when this is all done. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, close in prayer here real quick. The camera is starting to do that shaky thing again, and I don't know how to stop it. So let's close in prayer. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you that we are soon able to come together again. Lord, what a joyous time that will be. May you keep everyone safe and healthy from now until then and forevermore. And Lord, that you would be with us, transforming us, speaking to us and guiding us daily. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Father God, thank you for your presence with us, your love and your faithfulness towards us. You are the amazing eternal God. You pour out water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. Lord, we are dry. We are thirsty for you. You said, I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. Your love never ceases. Your faithfulness never ends. Thank you, Lord. We need your spirit, courage, and love to face into these days. Days of mourning and uncertainty, world unrest, days of disappointment over not being able to be together on special days. Lord, we need you as we find new ways to celebrate, new places of joy and expectation, and new ways to love those around us. You alone can fill us. You are the hope for all. You are ahead, behind, and beside us. This we know. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory. Amen. As we begin a new week, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the indwelling inspiration of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.